Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana Amin With uh, Imam al-Hajjawi rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Zad al-Mustaqni' coming to the end now of the chapters pertaining to the book of Hajj and Umrah the author we join him where he said وَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَّ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ خَرَجَ قَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ Whoever leaves early pertaining to the ayyam al whoever leaves early after two days then he should leave before the sunset on the second day Sheikh Mansour he says إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الثَّانِي عَشْرَ فَلِلْحَجْ أَمْرَانِ if it's the twelfth day then the hajj he has two situations أَنْ يَتَّعَجِّلْ to be quick meaning to leave before the thirteenth day فَهَذَا جَائِزْ this is permissible لكن يجب أن يخرج قبل غروب الشمس but he has to leave or she has to leave before the sun has set ويسقط ويسقط عنه رمي ذلك اليوم حينها and the stoning of the pillars for the next day will be alleviated from him will be removed from him in that situation secondly أن يتأخر if the person delays meaning that he stays for the thirteenth day فهذا أكمل وأحسن this is more complete and better because this is what the Prophet did because this is he delayed the Prophet and there would be an extra day uh, pertaining to acts of worship in his situation the one who delays and stays on the 13th well, the leader Jawaz al Amrain and the evidence for permitting both situations is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Baqarah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the specified days. So whoever leaves early after two days, there is no sin upon him. And whoever stays for the 13th there is no sin upon him liman ittaqa wattaqu Allah wa alamu annakum ilayhi tuhsharun to the end of the ayah and also in the hadith in Ahmad and Abi Dawood we have the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ayyamu mina thalathatun the days of mina are 3 days faman ta'ajjala fi yawmayn so whoever leaves after 2 days fala ithma alayhi there is no harm upon him no sin upon him waman ta'akhkhara fala ithma alayhi and the one who delays and stays all of the days, there is no sin upon him. Sheikh Salih Fawzan, Hafidullah, in his explanation, he said the intention to leave before Maghrib is not enough. Rather, the person must make preparations on that day, on the second day. However, if the person is delayed after having made preparations, delayed due to congestion, traffic or something of that nature, he can still leave early as he has already started the departure through his intention and through his trying to leave. So the important thing is that the person must have the intention to leave and must have made some action to leave, even if the person is therefore is thereafter uh, restrained from doing so. The author he says, And if it's not the situation that the person leaves early on the 12th day before Maghrib, then the person has to remain in Mina and do stoning on the next day. Sheikh Mansour he said, إِذَا غَرَبَتَ الشَّمْسَ عَلَى الْمُرِيدِ عَلَى مَرِيدِ التَّعَجِّلِ If the sun has set upon the one who wants to leave on the second day, وَهُوْ مَا زَلَ فِي مِنَا And he is still in Mina, فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَمْكُثُ إِلَى الْغَدِ In this situation it becomes imperative that the person stays until the next day. لِيَرْمِي كَذَلِكِ In order to stone the pillars. And the evidence, قَوْلُهُ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ The ayah that we previously quoted, وَالْيَوْمِ إِلَى الْغُرُوبِ And the day is until sunset. فَهُوَ إِسْمُ لِلنَّهَارِ دُونَ اللَّيْلِ So it's the definition for the day excluding the night. فَمَنْ غَرَبَتْ عَلَيْهِ شَمْسِ وَهُوَ فِي مِنَا لَمْ يَسْتُقْ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ تَعَجَّلَ That the one who remains in Mina after the sun has set, uh, then he doesn't fit into the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Fi yawmayni fala ithma alayhi. Whoever leaves in the two days then there's no sin upon him And also we have Imam al-Bayhaqi and al-Kubra He narrates from Umar radiyallahu anhu who said Man adrakahu al-masa Man adrakahu al-masa Fi yawm al-thani min ayyam al-tashriq Fal yaqum ila al-ghad Whoever is there in Mina 
in the days of Tashriq and the evening has come upon him on the second day, then he should stay فَلْيَقُمْ إِلَى الْغَدْ Then he should stay until, until the morrow, until the next day. حَتَّى يَنْفُرْ مَعَ So that he can leave with the people. So all of what we've said so far is that the person, if he wants to leave, he's able to leave after two days, but he has to leave before the Maghrib of the second day. Before the Maghrib of that day. So if he's delayed beyond that, then it means he has to stay for the third day. The author, he said, فَإِذَا رَادَ الْخُرُوجِ مِنْ مَكَّةَ لَمْ يَخْرُجْ حَتَّى يَطُوفُ لِلْوَدَاءِ that the person when he wants to leave Mecca after having finished the rites of Hajj he shouldn't do so until he makes what is known as Tawaf al-Wada' the, the farewell Tawaf Mansur says Sheikh Mansur إِذَا فَرَغَ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ نُسُكِهِ وَأَرَادَ أَنْ يَخْرُجَ مِنْ مَكَّةَ مُرْتَحِلًا if the person finishes his rites and he wants to leave Mecca فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَخْرُجْ حَتَّى يَطُوفْ تَوَافَ الْوَدَاء then he shouldn't leave until he makes the tawaf, the farewell pilgrimage, the tawaf al-wada' وَيَجْعَلُهُ بَعْدَ الْفَرَاغِ مِنْ جَمِيعِ أُمُورِهِ And he leaves this tawaf to be the last act that he does in Mecca meaning after he's finished everything that he needs to do and he's ready to leave then he should make this tawaf al-wada' Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه in Sahih Muslim he said كان الناس ينصرفون في كل وجه that the people they were leaving in all directions. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said لا ينفرن أحد حتى يكون آخر أهده بالبيت that no one should leave Mecca until he has done the tawaf al-wada' until the last thing that he does is he makes this farewell tawaf. The author he says فإن أقام أو التجر بعده أعاده if the person makes this tawaf but then he remains in the city in Mecca or he remains trading in Mecca then he should repeat this tawaf al-wada' he should repeat this farewell tawaf Sheikh Mansur says إِذَا طَافَ الْتَوَافَ الْوَدَعَ لَكِنَّهُ لَمْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ مَكَّةَ مُبَاشَرَةً if the person does the tawaf al-wada' but then he doesn't leave immediately from Mecca بَلْ أَقَامَ فِيهِ rather he stays in it as a resident أَوْ اتَّجَرَ فِيهِ فِيهَا or he stays to do some trading فَإِنَّهُ يَعِيدُ تَوَافِ الْوَضَاءِ So in this situation the person has to repeat this tawaf وَالْعِلَّةُ and the reasoning for that لِيَتَّحَقَّ كَوْنُ تَوَافِ الْوَضَاءِ آخِرُ الْأَحَدِ بِالْبَيْتِ is so that it can be actualized that the tawaf الْوَضَاءِ that the fellow tawaf is the last thing that the person did كَمَا جَرَتَ الْعَادَةُ فِي تَوْدِيَ الْمُسَافِ الْأَهْلَهُ like it is the, um, the norm that a person when he wants to make tawdi' when he wants to make dua uh, when traveling for his family mean that the last thing that he will do before he leaves is that he makes a dua for his family but the point being from what we mentioned is that the last thing that the person should do is that he should make the dua for wada before he leaves Sheikh al-Hajjawi, Imam al-Hajjawi he said فَإِن شَقَّ أَوْ لَمْ يَرْجِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ دَمٌ if it's difficult for the person to do this, the tawaf al-wada' or he's unable to return to do the tawaf al-wada' then he has to pay the penalty of dam. Sheikh Mansur, إِذَا تَرَكَ tawaf al-wada' nasiyan. If a person leaves tawaf al-wada' forgetfully ثُمَّ ذَكَرَهُ فَلَا يَخْلُو مِنْ حَالَتَيْنِ But then he remembers it, so his situation is going to be one of the two. Firstly, أَنْ يَكُونُ فِي رُجُوئِهِ مُشَقَّ that for him to return to Mecca to do this tawaf is going to be difficulty upon him. That the person he didn't remember that he has tawaf al wada to do until he had left Mecca by many kilometers, meaning he was quite far away from Mecca. Or he was in a group with a caravan, a group of people, and it's difficult for him to leave them. فَلَا يَلْزَمُهُ الرَّجُوعُ So in this situation of difficulty, it's not imperative upon the person that he has, that he has to return to do the tawaf al-wada' وَعَلَيْهِ الدَّمْ But in this situation, he has to pay the dam. He has to pay the penalty by sacrificing. لِتَرْكِهِ الْوَاجِبُ وَلَا يَأْثَمْ بِالنِّسْيَانِهِ And he pays this due to him having left off an obligation which is that tawaf al-wada' which is the farewell pilgrimage, farewell tawaf, sorry and there is no sin upon him due to his forgetfulness. The second situation That the person who forgot to make the tawaf al-wada' He's able to return to Mecca without any difficulty So in this situation it's imperative upon the person that he returns 
And if the person doesn't return, then he is sinful. Because he has um, he has intentionally left out an obligation. And in this situation, it's imperative also that he pays the dam. He pays the um, he pays the penalty by sacrificing an animal, and he's also sinful. Sheikh Mansour says, "What in ak?" Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, author he says, "When أخر طواف زيارة فطافه عند الخروج أجزاء عن الوداع." If the طواف زيارة, the طواف الحج, the طواف ال uh, the طواف الإفاضة, if this طواف is delayed as being the last thing that the person does when leaving Mecca, then this will be sufficient for him, and he doesn't need to do the طواف الوداع. Sheikh Mansour says. يجوز للإنسان أن يؤخر طواف الزيارة. It's permissible for the person to delay the طواف الزيارة الذي هو طواف الإفاضة, which is known also as طواف الإفاضة, طواف الحج, etc. ويجعله آخر أمره بالبيت عند خروجه. And he makes this the last thing that he does at the Kaaba before he leaves Mecca. فيطوفه بنية الإفاضة. So he makes this طواف with the intention of it being طواف الإفاضة. ويجزئ ذلك عن الوداع. And then that would of course suffice him from the farewell pilgrimage. Well, and the reasoning is ليس مقصودا لذاته because طواف الزيارة uh, sorry, the طواف الوداعة the, the farewell طواف is not intended in of itself بل لأن يكون آخر الأحد بالبيت rather what is intended is that the طواف is done before the person leaves the Kaaba before the person leaves the sanctuary فحصل بالطواف الإفاضة أن يكون آخر الأحد بالبيت so it's um, accomplished by doing the Tawaf al-Ifadah, the Tawaf al-Ziharah, the Tawaf al-Hajj. By doing this Tawaf, the Tawaf al-Wada' is also included in it uh, in terms of meaning because it's the last Tawaf that you do before you leave Mecca. Sheikh Mutalq Jasr, Hafizullah, he makes an important point. He says that the person when doing this uh, Tawaf al-Ifadah, which is the Rukn of Hajj, he shouldn't include with it the intention the niya of Tawaf al wadaa Okay, so with the Tawaf al ifadah he shouldn't include the intention of Tawaf al wadaa It's like, it's like for example, a person come to the masjid, he intends to pray Tahir al masjid. And then they, as he's intending, the iqam has been established. So now he leaves the Tahir al masjid, Tahir al masjid, and he goes ahead and he prays the obligatory prayer. So now this obligatory prayer is going to suffice for him having to pray the Tahir al masjid. So likewise with this Tawaf, الوضاعه عند طواف الزياره توثي سيز ويقف غير الحائض بين الركن والباب that the hajj other than the one who is having a, a, a menstruation cycle the hayid they stand between the ruqn and the bab this area is known as the multazm as sheikh mansour will explain to us now إذا فرغ الحاج من طواف الوداع if the hajj is now finished the طواف الوداع or the طواف الإفاضة and he's about to leave Mecca فإنه يسن له أن يقف بين الحج الأسود وبين الباب so it's recommended for him to stand in that place between the black stone and between the door of the Kaaba وهو الذي يسمى بالملتزم and it is the place which is called the الملتزم والملتزم بفتح الزي الملتزم بوذا فتحة عند الزي سمي بذلك is given that name لأنه يلتزم ويد ويدعى عنده because the person makes التزام the person attaches himself to that place meaning that his chest and his belly is attached to that part of the كعبة and the person makes dua there والمراد أنه يمكث فيه ويدعو ويسأل الله حاجته and the intent is that the person stays there for a period of time begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his needs. The author, he said, دَاعِيًا بِمَا ورد, That he does this making the du'as which have been reported. Sheikh Mansur, he said, لَمْ أَقِفْ عَلَى مَنْ أَخْرَجَ الْأَثْرِ I haven't found anybody, Sheikh Mansur said, that has authentically reported the du'a that should be said in this place. قَالَ شَيْخُ الْمُذَهِمْ قَالَ شَيْخُ ابن ثيمين رحمة الله عليه شيخ ابن ثيمين he said هذا الدعاء مما اختاره بعض أهل العلم this is the dua which some of the people of knowledge have chosen ولكنه لم يرد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم however it wasn't reported authentically from the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو دعاء مناسب and it is a dua which is appropriate وجامع and comprehensive 
ويظهر فيه الخضوع لله and it is shown in this dua submission and humbling, humbling oneself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وتدرع إليه فإن تيسر للإنسان فليدعو به so if it's easy for a person then he should make this dua وإن لم يتيسر وإن لم يتيسر فليدعو بما شاء and if it's not easy for the person to say this dua then he says any dua that he wants to say and this was mentioned by Sheikh Ibn Thaymin rahimullah in his book Ta'liqat Ibn Thaymin ala al-Kafi li Ibn Qudama okay uh, volume 4 page 70 so I haven't quoted this dua but it can be found the dua that you said the Mutazim it's a beautiful dua with lots of uh, beautiful and deep meanings the author says وَتَقِفُ الْحَائِدُ بِبَابِهِ and the Ha'id, the one who is experiencing menstruation she stands at the door of the masjid she doesn't enter into the sanctuary into the masjid وَتَدْعُ dua, and she makes a dua meaning the same dua which is made by others at the Multazim الحائد والنفساء يسقط عنهما طواف الوداع that the one who is experiencing menstruation and the one who is experiencing or is experiencing nifas then the farewell tawaf is not upon them nor is it valid for them meaning that they can't do it وذلك لأنهما ممنوعتان من دخول المسجد that is because they are forbidden from entering into the masjid فتقف فتقف بباب الحرم so they stand at the doors of the sanctuary وَتَدْعُوا بِالدُّعَى المتقدم الَّذِي يُقَالُ فِي الْمُتَزِمْ And they make the dua which has previously been mentioned uh, which is to be said at the Multazim. The author he said وَتُسْتَحَبُّ زِيَارَةُ قَبْرِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم وَقَبَرَيْ صَاحِبَيْهِ And it's recommended to visit the grave of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the graves of his two companions Abu Bakr and Umar رضي الله عنهما The majority of the scholars they allow this um, but Ibn Taymiyyah alayhi, said that all of the hadith which pertain to virtues of visiting the grave of the Prophet وسلم, or graves of the companions, the two companions of the Prophet وسلم, are weak or fabricated. However, there is no disagreement amongst the scholars that one can visit the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and also visit the grave of the Prophet وسلم, and his two companions. The problem arises where one intends only in this journey to visit the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu herein lies um, the difference of opinion herein lies the issue uh, according to scholars such as Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimallah however the issue needs some research for one to become for one to reach a conclusion the author he said Wasifatul Umrah the author is now going to mention the description of the Umrah and yuhrima biha min al miqat that the person gets into the state of ihram from the miqat or min adl al hill or from the closest place of the hill min makiyin wa nahawihi in Mecca or close to that la min al haram not from the sanctuary itself Sheikh Mansur he said lamma bayna sifat al hajj aqaba dhalika bi sifat al umrah after the author had mentioned the description of the hajj he followed it up now mentioning the description of the umrah wa taqaddama bayana bayanu ajzaiha and it's previously been mentioned parts of the umrah lakin arada an yadhkura dhalika bi istiqlali however the author now wants to mention this independently he wants to talk about the umrah independently so he mentions first of all الإحرام بها that the person makes the إحرام ويكون ذلك من الميقات لمن هو دون الميقات ومر به and this إحرام is done from the ميقات the designated places for the one who is passing by them أو من أدنى الحل من المكي ونحوه or from the place which is known as the hill for the one who is in مكة وهي أقرب الأماكن إلى حدود الحرم من خارج الحدود and it is the closest places to the to the um, to the borders of the sanctuary Okay, to the borders of the sanctuary of the Haram, but from outside of these sanctuaries, uh, from either a place known as the Naim or Ghayrihi or other than that, Masjid Aisha, for example. وَلَا يَحْرُمْ مِنْ دَاخِلِ الْحَرَمْ And the person doesn't put, get into the state of Haram from inside the Haram for the Umrah. فَإِذَا طَافَ وَسَعَى قَصْرَ حَلَّ If the person makes the Tawaf of the Umrah, and he makes the sa'i between Safa and Marwa and he cuts his hair then he is now free from the state of Ihram فَإِذَا فَعْلَ هذه الْأَمُورِ فَقَدْ حَلَّ Shaykh Mansur says when the person does these things he is then free from the strait of Ihram لِأَنَّهُ أَتَى بِأَفْعَالِ الْأُمْرَةِ كَامِلًا because he has come with the actions of Umrah completely 
ولم يبقى من أفعاله شيء and nothing is left for him to do after that فأشبى الحاج إذا لم يبقى له من أفعال حجه شيء so then he resembles the one who is on Hajj who has completed all of his rights meaning that the person is now free from his ihram after doing these three acts the four acts that we just mentioned so the person has to pass by the miqat and put on his ihram he has to make the tawaf he has to make the sa'i and he has to cut his hair or shave his hair وَتُبَاحُ كُلَّ وَقْتٍ and the ubrah is permissible at all times الْأُمْرَةُ مَشْرُوعَةٌ فِي كُلِّ وَقْتٍ بِلَا إِسْتِثْنَى Sheikh Mansour says Umrah is legislated at all times without any exception في أي يوم من أيام العام in any day from the days of the year وفي أي وقت من اليوم and from any time of the day لكنها في رمضان أفضل however in doing it in Ramadan is more virtuous and better because the Prophet وسلم said in the hadith in Bukhari in Muslim فَإِنَّ عُمْرَةً فِي رَمَضَانَ تَقْدِي حَجَّةً مَعِي For verily, Umrah in Ramadan is like doing Hajj with the Prophet ﷺ in virtue. SubhanAllah. The author, he said, وَتُجْزِئُ عَنِ الْفَرْضِ It suffices, the, the Umrah suffices the obligation, meaning that once Umrah is an obligatory on a person, once in a lifetime. So the person makes the Umrah, the obligation of another Umrah is removed from him. وَأَرْكَانُ الْحَجْ And the pillars of Hajj are the following الإحرام والوقوف and standing in عرفة والطواف الزيارة and the طواف الإفاضة or طواف الزيارة or the طواف الحج as it's called and making the سعي between صفا المروة لما فرغ من صفة الحج والعمرة أشار إلى أركانها After having finished describing the description of Hajj and Umrah the author now talks about the arkan the pillars of the Hajj وأركان الحج التي منها تتركب ماهيته and the pillars of the Hajj are those pillars which constitute constitute the Hajj ولا يقوم إلا بها أربعة and it's the completion of the Hajj cannot be done except by these four there are four pillars the first of them الإحرام والمراد به نية الدخول في النسك the first of them is the إحرام and the intent here What's meant by the ihram is the intention for entering into the rituals of the hajj. وَلَيْسَ الْمُرَادْ لَبْسُ الثَّوْبِ الْإِحْرَامِ And the intent is not just to wear the clothing of the ihram. فَإِذَا لَبِسَ وَلَمْ يَنْوِي لَمْ يَصِحْ حَجُّهُ So if a person wears the clothes of the ihram, but he hasn't made the intention to do the rituals, then his hajj is not going to be valid. The second pillar, the author said, وَالْوَقُوفُ بِعَرَفَةً and to stand in Arafah it is a pillar with the consensus of all of the scholars whoever doesn't stand in Arafah then his hajj is not complete and the Prophet said in the hadith in Ahmad and Abi Dawood a part of the hadith the hajj equates to Arafah the main pillar of hajj is Arafah so Sheikh Ahmed Bahjat, he mentioned that this rukun is gotten by sitting, even sitting in Arafah, or standing even for a few minutes, even for a few moments. The third thing, the third pillar, Tawaf al-Ziyara, the Tawaf al-Ziyara, the Tawaf al-Ifada, Tawaf al-Hajj. وَهُوَ Tawaf al-Ifada, وَهُوَ رُكُنْ بِالْإِتِفَاقِ And it is a pillar, again, based upon consensus of the ulama, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَلْيَطَوَّفُوا بِبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ وَلْيَطَوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ That the people should make tawaf around the Kaaba, as mentioned in Surah Al-Hajj. The fourth thing is the Sa'i. وَيُرَادْ بِهِ سَعْيُ الْحَجِّ وَهُوَ رُكْنُ مِنْ أَرْكَانَ الْحَجِّ And what is intended by the Sa'i is the game between Safa and Marwa for the right of Hajj. Aisha رضي الله عنها, she mentioned in the hadith in Bukhari in Muslim, uh, she said, مَا أَتَمَّ اللَّهُ حَجَّ إِمْرِئٍ وَلَا أُمْرَتُهُ لَمْ يَطُفْ بَيْنَ الصَّفَ وَالْمَرْوَعَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not complete the hajj or the umrah of a person who has not made the sa'i between Safa and marwa Who has not made the sa'i between Safa and marwa So this is a pillar and there is consensus upon that. The author he mentions وَوَاجِبَاتُهُ الْإِحْرَامِ مِنَ الْمِقَاتِ الْمُعْتَبِرْ لَهُ From the wajibat is that the person is in the Ihram from the Miqat which is relevant to him. And to stand in Arafah 
until the sun has set. Okay, so the rukan is that a person must be in Arafah for even a moment, but the wajib is that the person should be there until the sun has set. Sheikh Mansour, he said, Ashar al-an ila wajibat al-hajj. The author now speaks about the obligatory, not the pillars, the obligatory matters of hajj. Wadabit al-wajib fil hajj and the controlling rule for determining the uh, what is meant by the wajib in hajj. Ma la yajuz tarkuhu illa li'udhr. That which is not allowed to leave off unless there is an excuse for doing so. Wa yatarattabu ala tarkihi dam. And it's incumbent upon the one who leaves a wajib in Hajj that he has to pay the penalf- penalty of them, the penalty of sacrifice. However, the person's Hajj will still remain valid if he leaves off a wajib. And the obligatory wajibat of Hajj are seven. The first of them, Al Ihram min al Miqat al Mu'atabr lahu, that that person should be in the state of the Ihram. Uh, bef- at the Miqat, at the designated point that he passes by. بِأَنْ يَحْرُمْ مِنَ الْمِقَاتِ أَلَّذِي مَرَّ بِهِ وَلَا يَتَّعَدَّاهُ So the person should be in the state of Ihram before he passes the Miqat, which is pertinent to him, and he shouldn't pass by the Miqat without being in the state of Ihram. فَيَلْوِي مِنْ أَنْدِهِ وَكَذَا يَلْبَسْ ثِيَابِ الْإِحْرَامِ مِنْهُ So the person has to, has to have the intention from the Miqat and has to be wearing the clothing of Ihram from the Miqat and the evidence the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam أَحْرَمَ مِنَ وقال, and also the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also put on the clothing from the Miqat and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Sahih Muslim لِتَأْخُدُوا مَنَاسِكَكُمْ I do these acts so that you can follow me when you do your rituals of Hajj so this makes it obligatory the second wajib from the wajibat al waqufu bi arafa ila ghurub is to stand in arafa until the sun has set wa hadha yakunu idha at al hajj arafa qabla al ghurub and this is of course if the person comes to arafa before the sun has set so whenever the person gets to arafa it's wajib that he stays there until the sun has set fa yaqifu hatta taghrib al shams li yajma' fi waqufi bayna al nahar wa juz'un min al layl so the person does this so that he can combine between standing a part of the day and standing a part of the night and also, the author he mentions, وَالْمَبِيتُ لِغَيْرِ أَهْلِ سِقَايَةِ وَرِئَايَةِ بِمِنَا وَمُزْدَلِفَةَ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ نِسْفِ اللَّيْلِ And the, from the obligatory acts is that the person has to remain in Mina as long as they are not from those who are in charge of uh, the watering of the pilgrimages, of the pilgrims, or they're taking care of the livestock. Um, the person has to remain in Mina and Muzdalifa Muzdalifa until the uh, half of the night has passed, as we mentioned in the previous sessions in detail. So the third wajib is al-mubit bimina liyali tashriq is to remain in mina the nights of the tashriq, the eleventh, the twelfth, and the thirteenth. Wa yurakhas fi tarkihi li ashab al-adhar, and it's permitted to leave off this remaining in mina for those who have an excuse. Wa man yahtaj al-nasu li khidmatihim, and those who are committed to serving the people, kahl al-siqaya. Like the ones who are committed to uh, giving water to the pilgrims and taking care of the livestock in times past, in the olden times. And today, analogy is made on this ruling for those who are in charge of the traffic, for example, the traffic police. And those who are uh, nurses and doctors, etc. And the doctors were him and other than them. And Shaykh Ahmed Bahjat Hafidullah mentions that these people, they will leave off staying in Mina due to having commitments elsewhere, which are extremely important. So they don't have a sin upon them, but they have to pay the penalty of them. They have to pay the penalty by sacrificing an animal. The fourth wajib is al mabid bi Muzdalifa Laylatul Nahar. The fourth of the wajibat is that the person has to stay in Muzdalifa uh, the night of Eid. Because the Prophet and his companions they stayed in Muzdalifa. And the Prophet said, in order that you take the rights of Hajj from me. And it is more stress than staying the night in Mina. So it's not excused in any situation that the person leave this off. 
ولأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رخص لهؤلاء في منا لا مزدلفة because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم permitted some people to leave staying in منا but he didn't permit leaving of the staying in مزدلفة ومزدلفة ليلة واحدة and مزدلفة is only one night فلا يشق المبيت بها بخلاف منا so it's not difficult for a person to stay there as opposed to staying the three nights in منا where it could be difficult والرمي والحلاق والوداع and also from the obligatory acts is stoning and cutting the hair, shaving the hair and making the tawaf al uh, So the fifth of the obligatory matters is Ram al-Jimar is to stone the pillars Yawm al-Eid wa Ayyam al-Tashriq on the day of Eid, the one pillar uh, Jam- Jamrat al-Aqaba and all the other pillars on the days of Tashriq wa huwa wajib bil ijma and it is wajib bil ijma as mentioned by Imam Ibn Abd al-Bar in his book Al-Tamheed and others the sixth of them is to make halq or taqseer, is to shave your head or to cut your hair. And the seventh of them is tawaf al wada is the farewell tawaf because of the hadith of Ibn Abbas in Sahih Muslim that we mentioned already. لا ينفرن أحد حتى يكون آخر أهده بالبيت. Then none of you should leave the sanctuary until he has done the last thing uh, for him. The last thing for him is making tawaf around the Kaaba. لكن هذا الواجب هو على من أراد الخروج من مكة. And Sheikh Masood, however, this wajib of the tawaf al wada is for the one who wishes to leave Mecca. لِيَكُونُ آخِرُ الْأَهَدِ بِالْبَيْتِ So that his last action will be making the tawaf. فَمَنْ أَقَامَ بِمَكَّةِ فَلَا يُوَدَّعَ But whoever stays in Mecca, then he shouldn't make this tawaf al wada until he leaves Mecca. وَالْبَاقِي sunan. And other than these matters that we have mentioned from the arkan, the pillars, and the wajibat, then everything else is a sunnah. وَالْبَاقِي مِنَ فَعْلِ الْحَجْ وَأَقْوَالِهِ sunan. كالطواف القدوم like the طواف القدوم والمبيت بمنا ليلة عرفة and like staying in منا uh, the night of عرفة والرمل and making رمل in the, in the first طواف والاطباء and the اطباء وغير ذلك and other than that وأركان العمرة إحرام وطواف وسعي and the pillars of the عمرة is to make the إحرام and the طواف and the سعي فَمَنْ أَخَلَّ بِوَاحِدٍ مِنْهَا بَطَلَتْ أُمْرَتُهُ So whoever misses out one of these pillars, then his umrah is going to be invalid. سواء تركه عمدا أو جهلا أو ناسيا أو نسيانا Whether the person leaves these pillars uh, purposefully or forgetfully or not having known the ruling of them. Then in any situation the person leaves out these pillars, his, طوا- his umrah is going to be invalid. وَوَاجِبَاتُهَا And the uh, the wajibat, the obligatory matters, not the pillars, the obligatory matters are hilaq, is to shave your head or cut it, wal ihram min al miqat, and to make ihram from the miqat. فَمَنْ تَرَكَ لِإِحْرَام لَمْ يَنْعَقِدْ نُسُكُهُ Whoever leaves of the ihram, then his his rights of umrah are not going to be valid. أشار المؤلف إلى ما يتعلق بترك شيء من الأركان والواجبات والسنن. The author now mentions uh, pertaining to leaving off what happens when one leaves off a pillar or a wajib or a sunnah? So he said, إِذَا تَرَكَ رُكْنُ الْإِحْرَامِ وَهُوَ نِيَةَ الدُّخُولِ فِي النُسُكِ If the person leaves out the pillar of the ihram and it is the intention to enter into the rights, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ الْإِحْرَامِ فَإِنَّ إِحْرَامَهُ وَنُسُكُهُ لَمْ يَنْعَقِدْ So whoever leaves off the ihram, then his ihram and his rights are not going to be valid. بَلْ لَا بُدَ مِنَ النِّيَةِ However, rather it's imperative that the niyyah is there. فَالْإِبَادَاتِ لَا تَنْعَقِدْ إِلَّا بِالنِّيَةِ Because verily the acts of worship are not made contractually, are not made, um, are not rightly legislated, that's not the right word, are not valid for the person until he makes the niyyah. Now, the author says, وَمَنْ تَرَكَ رُكْنًا غَيْرَهُ أَوْ نِيَّتَهُ لَمْ يَتِمَّ نُسُكُهُ إِلَّا بِهِ and whoever leaves a pillar or other than it, or its intention, then his, his rights are not going to be complete except with it. إِذَا تَرَكَ رُكْنًا غَيْرُ الْإِحْرَامِ If a person leaves a rukn other than the ihram, إِمَّا إِنْ يَتْرُكْ أَدَاؤُهُ Either by leaving the act of that rukn, أَوْ يَفْعَلُهُ بِلَا نِيَ Or he does the act but without an intention, فَإِنَّ نُسُكُهُ لَا يَتِمْ حَتَّى يَأْتِ بِهِ Then verily his his rights of Hajj and Umrah are not going to be valid until he fulfills the pillar in the way it should be done. Sheikh Amir Bahjat mentions, however, an interesting point that uh, with regards to the intention of the person standing in Arafah, 
He said here the person doesn't need to have the intention. الوقوف بعرفة فإن من وقف بعرفة ولو كان نائما في السيارة. He's saying Sheikh Amr al Bahjad حفظ الله that even if a person goes through Arafah on a bus for example and he's sleeping or a person goes through Arafah he's in Arafah for a period of time but he doesn't know he's within the boundaries of Arafah even in these situations his Arafah, his standing in Arafah is going to be valid for him so he's mentioning that if the person loses his intention or doesn't know that he's in Arafah either due, due to him sleeping or he doesn't know that he's within the boundaries but he happened to be there then that is sufficient for him in fulfilling the pillar. وَمَنْ تَرَكَ وَاجِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ دَمْ And whoever leaves out any of the obligations of Hajj or Umrah, then he needs to sacrifice an animal. حُكُمْ مَنْ تَرَكَ وَاجِبًا عَلَيْهِ دَمْ سَوَاءٌ كَانَ تَرْكُ عَالِمًا أَوْ جَاهِلًا Whether this is left out, whether this pillar is left out intentionally or unintentionally, knowingly or not knowingly. وَالْدَمُ فِي عُرْفِ الْفُقَهَا and the dam blood in the uh, in the definitions of the fuqaha shat is a sheep aw sub'u badnatin or um, a seventh of a camel aw sub'u baqratin or a seventh of a cow yadhbahu fi makkah is to be sacrificed in makkah wa yuza'u fuqara wa yuza'u ala al-fuqara al-haram and its meat is to be distributed amongst the poor of the haram the muwatta imam malik in his muwatta Rahmatullah alayhi, he has the statement of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma man nasiya shay'an min nusukihi whoever forgets anything from his rituals aw tarakahu or leaves it off fa'an yuhriq damman then he should sacrifice the animals that we have mentioned the author he says wa sunna fala shay'a alayhi However, leaving of the sunnah, there is nothing upon the person. إِذَا تَرَكَ سُنَّ مِنْ سُنَّ الْحَجِ الْقَوْلِيَّةِ أَوْ فِعْلِيَّةِ فَلَا يَتَرَتُّبُ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ Leaving of the sunnah of action or the sunnah of statements in hajj and umrah, there is nothing upon the person. However, the person who is seeking the hajj al-mabrur, the hajj mabrur, the hajj wherein all of your sins are forgiven and you are like the day when your mother gave birth to you, this person will chase the sunnah as much as possible because he wants to complete the hajj in the best way to get the maximum reward. And this is the mindset of the one who goes to hajj or umrah after having saved up so much money, after having made uh, such a long journey to get there. The person doesn't want to wait, waste any of his time so that he can get as much reward as possible. The author he says, Bab al Fawat wal Ihsar, the last chapter of the book of Hajj, uh, pertaining to the Fawat, the one who misses out on the Hajj, or the one who is prevented from continuing with the Hajj. Bab al Ihsar. Man fatuhu laquf fatuhu al Hajj. Whoever misses out in staying in Arafah, then he has missed out on the Hajj. Sheikh Mansur he said, Ida fat al insan al waquf bi arafa if a person misses out in staying in arafa bi an wasala ba'da fajr yawm al nahar wa lam yaqif bi arafa that the person he came to arafa after the morning of eid fa inna al hajj yakunu qad fatahu for verily this person has lost out the hajj and the evidence is in the hadith of ahmad and abi dawood where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, a group of people asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about hajj so the Prophet ﷺ called out to the people via somebody and he said Al-Hajj Arafah The Hajj, its pillar is Arafah, meaning its main pillar is Arafah So whoever catches that has caught the Hajj and whoever misses that has missed the Hajj The author he says وَالتَّحَلَّلْ بِعُمْرَةِ وَيَقْضِي وَيُهْدِي إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ إِشْتَرَطَهُ That the person should free himself from the Hajj because he missed out on the Arafah by uh, performing Umrah and he has to make up the Hajj and he has to he has to give a sacrificial animal unless he made a condition that he wasn't going to, that he didn't need to. Man waquf bi arafa Whoever has missed out on Arafah, there's three things upon him. Awalan at-tahallul bi umrah. The first is that he must free himself from the rights from the ihram of Hajj by doing Umrah. Bi an yuqlib niyatul Hajj ila umrah. That he changes. Uh, the near of the Hajj to the Umrah فيطوف ويسعى ويحلق أو يقصر ثم يتحلل the person he makes the Umrah completely and then he is free from the uh, the restrictions of the Haram the second thing which is upon him 
al-qada that the person has to make it up bi an yaqti al-hajj afait lianahu lamma shara'a fi an-nusq sara wajiban alayhi because once he entered upon the rituals of the hajj it became obligatory upon him idh al-hajj yalzim bi shuru' fayusiru kal mandur so the hajj once you start it it's imperative that you complete it like a vow bi khilaf sa'ir at-tatawwu'at as opposed to other uh, optional acts of worship Yahdi. The third thing is that يَذْبَحُ حَدْيًا فِي أَمِ الْقَضَاءِ Is that when he's making up the Hajj, then he has to offer a sacrificial animal. وَهَذَا إِذَا لَمْ يَشْتَرِتْ And this is if the person didn't make a condition. He didn't make اشتراط. فَإِنْ كَانَ قَدْ اشْتَرَتَ فَإِنَّهُ يَلْزِمُهُ حَدِي And if he did, فَإِنْ كَانَ قَدْ اشْتَرَتَ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَلْزِمُ Hadi. So if the person made the ishtarat, then he doesn't have to uh, sacrifice the sacrificial animal nor does he have to make it up. وَمَنْ صَدَّهُ عَدُوٌ عَنِ الْبَيْتِ أَهْدَى ثُمَّ حَلْ And whoever is prevented from entering into the sanctuary in, uh, upon the Kaaba by an enemy, then he sacrifices and then he is free from his ihram. إِذَا مَنَعْهُ مِنَ الْوَصُولِ إِلَى الْبَيْتِ عَدُوٌ وَنَحْوِهِ فَلَمْ يَسْتَطِعَ الْوَصُولِ So if a person is prevented uh, from entering to the Kaaba by an enemy or something of that nature فَإِنَّهُ يَهْدِي أي يَذْبَعُ هَدْيًا So in this situation the person he sacrifices the sacrificial animal وَجُوبًا as an obligation ثُمَّ يَحِلْ مِنْ إِحْرَامِهِ And then he is free from his, his ihram سواء كان إحرامه بحج أو بأمرة Whether this ihram is due to the hajj the ihram of the hajj or the ihram of umrah and the evidence is in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَإِنْ أَحْسِرْتُمْ فَمَا اسْتَيْسَرَ مِنِ الْحَدِي And if you are prevented from entering into Mecca then give what, what you can from the sacrificial animals and also in Bukhari and Muslim أَلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَمْ أَمْرَ أَصْحَابُهُ لَمَّا حَصَرُوا بِالْحُدَيْبِيَةِ فَقَالْ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ordered the companions when they were prevented from entering into Mecca قُومُوا فَانْحَرُوا ثُمَّ حْلِقُوا Get up, sacrifice your animals and then shave your heads and then you are free from the ihram فَإِنْ فَقَدَهُ صَامَ عَشْرَةَ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ حَلَّ If the person doesn't have the sacrificial animal he fasts 10 days and then he is free from that He fasts these 10 days with the intention of tahallal with the intention of freeing himself from the ihram ثُمَّ يَحَلُّ إِذَا فَرَغَ مِنَ الصيام. And then he is free from the ihram once he has finished these 10 days of fasting what, And the evidence الْقِيَاسُ عَلَى حَدِّ التَّمَتُّعْ is the is the qiyas made upon the sacrificial animal of the hajj tamattu' fahuwa huna lam yajid hadi so in the situation with the hajj tamattu' doesn't find the animal he fasts 10 days uh, and in this situation sorry in the situation with the hajj tamattu' doesn't fa- find the fa- the sacrificial animal he fasts 10 days now so similarly to this situation the one who uh, is in the muhsir and he doesn't have an animal to sacrifice so for him he's like the Hajj Tamatta who doesn't have an animal to sacrifice he fasts 10 days when Sudda and Arafa tahallala bi Umrah and if the person is prevented from reaching Arafa he makes tahallal by doing Umrah in Sudda al-Hajj al-Muhrim bil-Hajj an jami'a Mecca la an jami'a Mecca if the person is prevented not from the whole of Mecca bal an dukuli Arafa faqat rather just uh, from entering upon Arafah فَإِنَّهُ يَتَّحَلَّلْ مِنْ حَجِّهِ So this person, he makes tahallal from his hajj وَيَجْعَلُهُ أُمْرَةً And he makes it into umrah وَالْإِلَّةُ أَنَّ لَهُ أَنْ يُقْلِبَ الْحَجْءِ إِلَى أُمْرَةً That the person is able to make his hajj into umrah مَا دَامَ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَقِفْ بِعَرَفَةً Because he wasn't able to stand at Arafah وَلَوْ بِلَا حَصُرْ Even if he wasn't prevented from entering into Mecca فَمَا الْحَصُرْ أَوْلَى even if he wasn't prevented from entering into Mecca or into Arafah, he missed out on the Arafah, so he's not going to be able to complete Hajj, so then it's better for him to uh, change it to Umrah, and in the situation where he is prevented from Bab al-Awwal, even more so it's better for him to change it to Umrah. وَمِثْلُ هَذَا لَوْ أَنَّ أُنَاسًا حَصَرَهُمْ السير. And an example, a modern day example, is like people if they are stuck in traffic, and they can't get to وَلَمْ يَتَمَكَّنُوا مِنْ دَخُولِ عَرَفَةً And they're unable to get to Arafah in time لِأَجِلْ خَطَّ السَّيْلِ وَزِحَامِ Due to the traffic حَتَّى طَلَعَ فَجْرْ يَوْمَ نَحَرْ Until Fajr on the day of Nahar فَإِنَّهُمْ يُحِلُّونَ بِعُمْرَةً So rather these people they change their niya into Umrah فَتَبَيَّأَنَ الْحَصْرَ لَهُ حَالَتَانِ So it's come clear that Hasr 
that being prevented had two situations. First, Hasul and Jami' in Mecca, that the person is completely unable to get to Mecca, all of Mecca. The second situation, Hasul and Arafah, that the person is only prevented from Arafah. And for each situation, we gave a ruling. The author, he said, وَإِنْ حَصَرَهُ مَرَضٌ أَوْ ذَهَابُ نَفَقَةٍ If what's prevented the person from completing Hajj is sickness or he's lost his money, بَقْيَ مُحْرِمًا Then the person remains in the state of Ihram. إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ إِشْتَرَطَ Unless the person had made the اشتراط, had made the condition at the beginning of the Hajj. مَنْ كَانَ الْمَانِ لَهُ مِنَ الْقِيَامِ بِالْحَجِّ وَالْأُمَّةِ مَرْضًا أَوْ ذَهَابُ نَفَقَةٍ لَا حَبْسَ أَدُوٍ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَأْخُذْ حُكْمُ الْمُحْسِرِ وَبِهَذَا قَالَ إِبْنِ عَبَاسِ وَإِبْنِ عُمَرِ So Ibn Abbas and Ibn Umar, they said if the person is prevented not due to an enemy but rather due to having become sick or having lost his money, then the person, he takes, he, he doesn't take the ruling of the muhsir, uh, so he has to stay in the state of his, his ihram. And the evidence is from the hadith of Bukhari that the Prophet ﷺ دَخَلَ عَلَى الضُّبَاءَ بِنْتُ زُبَيْرِ فَقَالَتْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنِّي أُرِيدُ الْحَجِّ so the Prophet ﷺ entered upon Duba'a bint Zubair and she said, O oh Prophet of Allah, I want to go Hajj. وَأَنَّ شَاكِيَةٌ فَقَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم, But I'm suffering from pain, I'm suffering from illness. So the Prophet ﷺ said, حُجِّي وَاشْتَرِطِي Make the Hajj, but make a condition that if you cannot fulfill the Hajj, then you are from free from the rituals and the ihram of the Hajj. أَنَّ مَحَلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي That, O oh Allah, my freedom from the ihram, is from the point where I cannot continue anymore. So if the evidence from this hadith, Shaykh Mansur says, فَلَوْ كَانَ الْمَرِيدِ يُبِيحُ الْإِحْلَالِ مَحْتَاجَتْ إِلَّا الْإِشْتَرَاطِ So if it was permissible for a person to be free from the state of ihram due to a sickness, then it wouldn't have been needed for the person to make ishtarat, for the person to make the condition. So as a conclusion, like the author, he said that if the person is prevented from completing the Hajj due to sickness or losing money, then this person is not free from his ihram. He stays in the situation of ihram until the person finds enough money or has regained their health once again to complete the Hajj, unless the person made ishtarat, unless the person made ishtarat. وعلى هذا فيبقى محرما إلا أن يزول عذره بأن يشفي من مرضه أو يجد نفقة أو نحو ذلك ويتم النسك as I mentioned فإن كان النسك حج so if the nusuk if the rituals are hajj وقدر على البيت بعد فوات عرفة تحلل بأمرة so if the person was able to go to Mecca after not being able to, though he wasn't able to go to Arafa, then the person makes the halil by doing Umrah as we have mentioned لأنه يأكد حكم الفوات because he takes the ruling of the people of Fawat, the people who missed out on Arafah. We'll stop here inshallah before uh, the last chapter that we have to take, I believe is pertaining to the Hadi and the Udhiyya. Matters pertaining to the sacrificial animal and matters pertaining to which animals are permissible to be sacrificed as Udhiyya, etc. Now, Tayyip. So we finish with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the issues pertaining to the Hajj and the Umrah. All that's left is speaking about the qualities of the animals which are used for sacrifice, the qualities of the animals which are used for on Eid al-Adha, etc. If you have any questions on what we've taken, then feel free. If not, then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this heavy in our scale of good deeds. And forgive me for any and many mistakes that I have made. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.